probably printed off the smallest diagram in the world. However, never mind. So we're looking at adaptations for uh, herbivorous and carnivore diets. We're going to pretty much ignore this in little insectivore down here, this little mole. So we're going to start off with the herbivores. Now herbivores have massive issues uh, because the food stuff that they're eating is pretty indigestible and you will remember the structure of a uh, plant cell and it's got this big chunky cell wall around the outside it's uh, you know that's pretty fibrous stuff it's quite hard to get rid of so it needs a lot of chewing um, but not only that the, all the nutrients are effectively inside of the cells so um, you need to get through the cell wall to get the nutrients out of the cells and the other huge issue for herbivores is that no mammal produces, in fact the only things that produce cellulases are bacteria. So they have to provide at some point along their gut um, a structure that will house a lot of bacteria. And generally that would be the cecum, which again leads to further problems because the rest of the gut pretty much looks like ours. We've got, you know, the esophagus and the stomach and they might have chewed their food an awful lot to try and squish some cellular material out of it. Um, you've then got the sort of duodenum, brilliant area of the gut, and the small intestine to do absorption and then it hits where you can digest the cellulose which is going to be a bit of an issue because your digestive enzymes are up here but this is where you've managed to get through the cell wall I, I know, nonsensical who thought of that? so um, the large intestine is obviously going to do some absorption and then in a, you know, it drops out the anus or the indigestible material herbivores uh, produce a lot of poo because they're eating a very indigestible food source um, and they pretty much have to eat a lot of food to make up for all the stuff that they're losing in their feces. Uh, rabbits have um, a rather repulsive uh, way of dealing with the problem in that they produce uh, soft and presumably sweet tasting um, because of the digestion that's gone on, pellets that they re-ingest, so they do sort of uh, what's called coprophagy, literally shit eating, and uh, they put it through again so that it goes past the digestive bits and the absorptive bits, so that they can actually absorb the nutrients out of it, and then they produce other pellets that have been through a couple of times um, that they leave on the ground for you to stand in. Uh, horses are uh, pretty much the sort of same. Uh, their cecum again is at the bottom. If you look at horse poo, it's often got you know entire bits of grass and straw in it, uh, and there's you know it's quite chunky and quite fibrous in nature because things have not been digested, and they're having to eat a lot just to get the nutrients out that they need, and particularly um, plant materials, pretty rubbish at protein. Um, you do have the opportunity, of course, to digest some of the bacteria that you're housing, uh, and they're quite proteinaceous. Uh, ruminants are the sort of, you know, the top end uh, herbivore, absolutely uh, fab at doing this. And the reason that they're fab at doing this is that in their rumen and reticulum, which are chambers of the stomach, so they don't have four stomachs, they've got one stomach divided into four chambers. Uh, this is where the bacteria are. Well that's great isn't it, because if this is where the bacteria are churning out cellulase, and they're symbiotic so they get you know lots of nice uh, urea rich saliva actually um, into their so that they, they've got a source of nitrogen to make their own proteins with. They've got somewhere warm, loads of water, nice pH, um, and then they obligingly digest the cellulose cell walls. Um, 
to sort of help that process, the key feature of ruminants is that they do this swallow the grass, regurgitate it, rechew it, swallow it, regurgitate it, rechew it, um, up from their rumen. They call that uh, chewing the cud. So that's what they do. And actually the largest ruminant is the giraffe. So think about the problems a giraffe has uh, chucking up from its stomach all the way up that neck and into its mouth. Once um, it's gone through the rumen and of course you know you need loads of saliva to get the food down and back up and um, so they do a lot of dribbling. It can then go through the small intestine for di further digestion, absorption um, and then they've got a reasonably, for their size, a reasonably small cecum again with bacteria in it. No idea what the spiral loop's for, not interested and then they absorb the water and uh, don't bother re-eating their faeces obviously that would be bad and so a ruminant's uh, faeces are far more it's really obvious that they've digested an awful lot more of their food than your average horse um, carnivores they have a very short intestine, a very short colon, and a very small cecum. The cecum uh, is smaller even than ours. Obviously, we do eat some plant material. Pretty much, uh, carnivore in the wild have evolved to eat um, meat that they've just killed, or meat that somebody else has killed uh, that might have been hanging around for a bit. So, meat is protein, and it's very easily uh, digestible and we are geared up, so I refer you to my earlier video for where the uh, endopeptidase is, so we've got a very sort of great sequence of sort of chopping those proteins up and getting them into amino acids and getting them out into the uh, bloodstream. So there's this sort of pretty normal protein digestion, dead easy. Uh, don't keep everything in your gut too long, it might be loaded with bacteria. So very, very short gut, doesn't need to be long, nice digestible material and um, get it out as soon as possible um, and of course not producing as much poo because they're not wasting as much but, you know a bit, bit of fur and bone I would think is probably their main bit of bit of grass you'll all have seen dogs eating grass to help digestion uh, it's just to provide a bit of fibre for everything to cling on to I think anyway there we go that's a charming subject